The iPhone 6 is my third iPhone, with the 4 being the first full touchscreen phone I ever used. So while my daily driver is usually an HTC One M8, I appreciate the simplicity and functionality of iOS, and I've been known in the past to say I pretty much don't have a preference. Today that changes, but which way does it go? Well, I guess you'll have to watch the video. No spoilers. Corsair Gaming RGB keyboards feature precision Cherry MX RGB key switches for 16.8 million color per key backlighting for virtually unlimited customization. Click now to learn more. We'll kick things off with the speeds and feeds. It's got a dual core 1.4 GHz A8 chip with a gig of RAM, 16 to 128 gigs of internal storage, an 1810 mAh battery, and a 4.7 inch 1334 by 750 display. But don't let any of those very middling specs scare you off too much. A 16 gig base model with no micro SD expansion at $650 is embarrassing, but everything else is pretty much fine. Cores and gigahertz are meaningless without considering the under underlying architecture. In fact, we'll have a video coming in the future that really dives into this subject, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. RAM only affects performance when multitasking or with background processes running, and iOS 8 doesn't raise the bar when it comes to using multiple apps at the same time, nor does it lower it when it comes to expertly managing idle resource use, so you don't need a ton of RAM. And then the battery also benefits from that same resource management, and I easily ended up with 30 to 40% battery at the end of a medium work load day. As for the resolution, I'll talk more about that one later, I think. Physically, man, if you've seen one iPhone, you really have seen them all, haven't you? The back has an Apple logo, two antenna bands that the internet seems to care about a lot for some reason, but I think is fine, a mic, a dual LED flash that works stunningly well even in pitch darkness at close range, and an 8 megapixel camera whose f2.0 sapphire glass lens protrudes from the casing in a way that I thought was a big deal when I heard about it at first, but hasn't bothered me at all when using the phone. On the top we see nothing but the 6.9mm thick profile of the phone, on the left is a mute button and a volume button, and another volume button I guess. On the bottom is a headphone jack, lightning connector, and a speaker, and on the right is a nano sim tray and a lock button. The first significant change. One that I almost really like. It's better than having it on the top since the iPhone is no longer a one-handed affair, but Apple managed to commit the sin of having a lock button that opposes other buttons, in this case the volume rockers, so it's easy to change volume when reaching for the lock. Which brings us around to the front. At the top is a disappointing 1.2 megapixel camera. Love or hate selfies guys, you gotta acknowledge that people take them and I think HTC made a smart move here an earpiece speaker, and then on the chin bar, the classic iDevice button with a new trick up its sleeve. Touch ID is still awesome, and a just plain faster way to unlock your phone, buy apps and buy regular stuff with the just launched Apple Pay service, but now you get a double touch that, what? Moves the entire UI down to, what? More on that later. The screen itself boasts 100% sRGB color, looks beautiful from all angles, is super bright, maybe even too bright for me when using it at night, with great contrast so it can easily be used outdoors, and it has such smooth auto brightness that I completely forgot I had it on. And then back to the resolution, which I promised to touch on again. To me, the iPhone 6 is Apple's statement to the world that the pixel count race, something they started with the iPhone 4, is over. And I think they're right. However random 750p might be, at this size, it's just plain good enough. Something I actually talk about in both my Moto X review and my LG G3 review. I did have some complaints though. While I love the extra screen size for watching videos compared to the 5S, and a 4.5 to 5 inch it is, is really my sweet spot for screen size, which is why you won't likely see an iPhone 6 Plus review from me, and while the design is beautiful and so elegant the way the glass itself is rounded into the aluminum unibody compared to the Moto X's flat glass with a rounded housing, this causes unavoidable reflections to show up around the edge of your content, something that I did find a little distracting. 
distracting, but not nearly as bothersome as the general ergonomics and usability of the device. Now I already whined about the lock button. The bottom speaker is still a relic of a bygone age, but one that we, I guess we expect from Apple. But on my podcast, when rumors of larger iPhones first started circulating, I pointed out that because of the way back buttons are in the top left and text entry fields are top center, things that are fine for one-handed use on a small device, Apple would need to rethink their navigation. And this to touch thing was not what I had in mind. It helps a bit. I can search for a contact or navigate back in an app more easily, but it doesn't work across the board even in Apple's own OS. I mean, why do I need to reach way up there to take advantage of the much improved spotlight feature? And even with this feature, Apple's UI moves you around on the screen so much that combined with the incredibly light design and rounded sides, this phone is one of the most slippery fish that I've ever used, even with this DeBrand carbon fiber wrap on it. On top of that, I feel like aside from content consumption, I'm not really getting anything extra from the bigger screen anyway. Most UI elements are just blown up, and while I do get an extra row of home screen icons, the only solution to moving my frequently used stuff to the bottom right is still to fill the top rows with crap that I don't use as often. For shame, Apple. And I guess since we've already started down this path, I might as well do the rest of my ranty stuff now. iOS still doesn't allow landscape lock on small screen devices. Devices. This seems like such a small thing to ask for for those of us who use our phones in bed a lot. Sharing options are still very inflexible. I know you have an email client built into the phone and you have your own cloud storage, but I don't use them. I use Gmail and Dropbox and you're making my life slower, Apple. And last but not least, I can call people with my voice through the contact list, through recent, in a message, and now even by double clicking and selecting favorites way up at the top of the screen, or I can double click, I guess. But none of these are as fast and as versatile as T9 dialing. Apple, please just implement this. Back to good stuff though, the camera rocks. It's lightning fast to launch, auto focuses so fast you hardly even notice it. It captures great images without thinking about it and can even do 60 FPS 1080p and 240 FPS 720p capture. The default app is still pretty limited. You can take lightning fast burst photos, you can tweak exposure very easily, but that's about it. And now that they're adding more camera modes, I really don't think the swipe to change modes model is that great anymore. Uh, maybe Square could take a hike in the next update or they could come up with something a little bit better. But I mean, part of the beauty of you know Apple's camera app is the simplicity. And the good news is that they now allow third party camera apps so manual control geeks can get their jollies by using those as as long as they don't want to change the aperture, which isn't supported at this time. Speaking of third-party app support though, iOS finally supports third-party keyboards, which is good because I found the stock one's prediction just plain not useful. And while I appreciate the forward and back arrows due to Apple's otherwise slow cursor positioning method, the landscape layout moves everything so close to the middle of the phone that for me to reach it comfortably is just not that great. It's just too bad that SwiftKey's iOS keyboard sucks so far. It's super responsive and I really wanted to like it, but the spacebar position moves in certain particularly social media apps, a behavior that you can't turn off, and you can't access a secondary layer of functionality on all the keys by pressing and holding. That feature combined with the user adjustable hold down delay has made SwiftKey my go-to on Android. I, it's not there yet here, hopefully they get there in time, but it's still very early days. Ah, I got a notification. There are a lot of other little improvements that come with iOS 8 as well. Mac Rumors has a great list of them that I'll link in the video description, but some standouts are these. Recording last location in Find My iPhone before the battery dies, using Siri to ID songs so you don't need Shazam anymore, Wi-Fi calling if your carrier supports it, calling out, hey Siri, when the device is plugged in to activate what is still my favorite voice control method, easier insertion of photos and messages, sending out a randomized Mac address when scanning for Wi-Fi networks, some health crap that I don't care about at all, and the coolest thing of all, I really did save the best for last here, family sharing. I mean, imagine that. Apple being the one to follow Valve's lead and let us share the digital crap we bought with the people who live with us in the same way that we used to be able to do with physical stuff. It works with apps, music, books, and more, and I applaud Apple for being forward thinking in this regard. 
which leads to the conclusion, which, oh, sorry, right, first the obligatory, right, this thing is actually a phone uh, bit. Call quality on my side was excellent. I received no complaints about the mic from the other side. And now the conclusion, it's an iPhone. If you don't like iPhones, it's not gonna change your mind. And if you like iPhones and thought they should be bigger, then go buy it or the even larger plus version because let's face it, you were gonna do that anyway. But for me, the rate at which Android continues to improve and the way that iOS, with the exception of little things like family sharing, continues to not really take huge strides forward and the way that it didn't adapt correctly to the larger devices is a, a real stumbling block, whatever the iPhone sales figures might look like. Anyway, when the time comes, whether you're buying an iPhone or some other thing, maybe consider getting a dbrand skin or dbrand skin, excuse me, to go with it. They generously provided us with the skinned iPhone 6 that you saw in this review, just so I could do this review. And in the link in the video description, you'll find details for the 10 skins that they're also giving away to Lucky Linus Tech Tips viewers. So they're obviously good guys all around. And if them being good guys isn't enough for you to think about buying vinyl wraps for your controllers, consoles, phones, and other devices from them, then consider also the high quality of their products and the excellent fit and finish that you got to enjoy during all the Mac macro footage of the phone that you saw in this video. They really are an excellent way to gussy up your phone and also protect its finish if you frequently lay it down flat on surfaces the way that I do. I do have an affiliate link for Debrand, so if you want to, you can head to debrand.com slash Linus Tech Tips, but I don't think I get a kickback or anything, so don't stress about the link too much. Just remember, they're cool guys and they make skins for phones and consoles and controllers and cool stuff like that. And so, you guys are cool guys too, I think, for sitting all the way through this video, well over 10 minutes about iPhones. It's amazing you didn't die. Thank you for watching and not falling asleep. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on the iPhone 6. Do you desperately need me to review the 6 Plus, given that it's basically the same thing, but even bigger and even more awkward to hold? And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Check the link in the video description if you want to support us. You can give us a monthly contribution, buy a cool t-shirt like this one, or it's change your Amazon bookmarks with one of our affiliate code whenever you want to buy an iPhone, say, for example. And I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.